Hello, praise the Lord. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I present to you Hagar Ministries Worldwide in conjunction with Zion Charismatic Chapel International. I present to you the progressive word of God. And so before we begin, I want us to have a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we pray to bless your name. We pray to worship you for your awesomeness and making all things beautiful, caring God, great deliverer, internal God, good God, holy, immortal King of kings and Lord of lords. For your loving kindness is better than life. If our lips, I praise you. From the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, thy name shall be praised. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify thy name. And even as your word comes forth, come guide, come teach, come instruct us. That in the end, Lord, we'll receive inspiration, illumination, enlightenment. That Lord will be grounded and rooted in our prayer lives that your name may be glorified. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Today, I come to you with the next segment. I believe we began to deal with the segments on the 16 dimensions of prayer. And so, I began to introduce you the importance of understanding the different aspects of prayers. In fact, if we are to divide prayers, we have about four dimensions of prayers. We are prayers that leads to address God. And there are prayers that are meant to be prayed for men, which are described as intercessory prayers. And we also have a type of prayer that you need to pray for yourself. And finally, there's another aspect of prayer that has to deal with satanic activities that would deal with the spiritual forces and devices of the satanic activities that goes on in this entire universe. But today, I want to continue with the segment which I began on the series of the 16 dimensions of prayer. And for all you know, I began to explain to you the importance of beginning your prayer properly. And the first aspect of prayer had to do with the prayer of blessing. Whenever you start your prayers, you begin with blessings to the Lord. You bless the Lord with your prayers. Just like David said in Psalm 103, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And when if you go continue further, you realize in Psalm 34, verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mind. And so you realize that prayers are very important. It's not just that we just get up and start praying. Prayers are taught. If our Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, in Luke chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, after Jesus had gone to pray, the Bible says that the disciples came to him and asked him, Lord, teach us how we ought to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples. And so Jesus began to teach his disciples. And so we have also come to a time and a decade where when the Lord was taking the disciples or taking men into captive or when he left captivity, captive, the Bible said, he left and gave gifts to men. And the gifts he gave to men, some were, became apostles, some became prophets, some became pastors, some became teachers, some became evangelists. So you realize that we have the fivefold, and our duty is to equip the saints, which is the body of Christ, both ministers and members of the body of Christ. And that's why I'm on this platform to share this information through this media to help you do the best you can to the glory of the Lord in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, like I stated, the segment began with the prayer of blessing. 
The second aspect of prayer is prayer of worship. And the third aspect of prayer is the prayer of praise. And so I've dealt with the first segment, which has to do with blessing, prayers. And then the second aspect had to be prayer of worship, how to worship God in your prayers. Tell I dealt with the prayers of praise, the importance of praising the Lord in your prayers to learn the names of the Lord. It helps you to understand the real name of the Lord and the attributes that are related to his name. And today, I want to deal with the subject matter on prayer of thanksgiving. You see, it's sad that in our generation or during our time, we've been taught for many years that you begin your prayers with thanksgiving. No, you don't start your prayers with thanksgiving. You see, it is wrong to start your prayers with thanksgiving. So we need to know how to start our prayers spiritually and scripturally. So we need to start our prayers scripturally, which is biblically. And we need to know how to start our prayers spiritually. So it's both spiritually and scripturally, or scripturally and spiritually. We need to balance equation for quantum leap, which is very, very important. And so I want to begin this fourth segment, which has to deal with prayer of thanksgiving. So take your pen, your notebook, and your Bible, and let's go through this segment as I come to you with the word of God through prayer. So the title of what I'm treating today is called the prayer of thanksgiving. Now the question is, what is thanksgiving? The Hebrew word for thanksgiving is helion, helion, which means the celebration of thanksgiving. The English translation of thanksgiving also means the act of expressing of your attitude of gratitude. So thanksgiving simply means having an attitude of gratitude, showing your gratitude to God and to men. So anytime you decide to give thanks to the Lord is an, having an attitude of gratitude. So thanksgiving is an act of gratitude, attitude of gratitude for his favor and his mercies toward you and I. That is the definition for thanksgiving. Now, when we go into the Bible, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says, Giving of thanks is God's will. Therefore, and therefore, it should be a habit and a daily practice in our prayer lives. You see, so giving of thanks is the will of God. So it's God's will for us to give him thanks daily, daily. But mind you, we don't start our prayers with thanksgiving. Prayer starts with blessing, worship, praises before you come to thanksgiving. In fact, thanksgiving is, the, is in the fourth position of prayer. When you are praying, prayer comes at the fourth position when you pray. So anytime you start your prayers with thanksgiving, the moment you go to bed and you wake up early morning and you wake up and you say, Lord, I thank you, you've, you've eliminated blessing, worship, and praises, and then you've jumped right straight to the prayer of thanksgiving, when, which is wrong. So we, we pray amiss. The Bible says how we ought to pray. We do not know. And so the Bible said, the Holy Spirit make an intercession with groanings. And that word groanings means he does it with pain. But we, the Holy Spirit is here to teach us to know how to pray correctly and appropriately. It's very, very important. Correctly, properly, and appropriately is important for us to know that. And so it is good to offer thanks to God in the morning, afternoon, and evening to testify of his faithfulness. So giving of thanks is good. But when we give thanks to the Lord, it signifies that 
we, we, we are showing our appreciation of his, of his goodness and mercies toward us. That is what it means. And so when we go to Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. That is what it means. So it is good to give thanks unto the Lord. But that does not mean you start your prayers with thanksgiving. No, you don't start your prayers with thanksgiving. In fact, thanksgiving is in the fourth position of prayer. We have 16 dimensions of prayer, but thanksgiving is in the fourth position. That is why I'm treating this segment. So we are getting the fourth segment of prayer. And so in the Bible, the Jews celebrate thanksgiving as a feast for seven days to show their appreciation to God. Thanksgiving is called celebration of the Lord. So that is what it means. And so when you read the Bible, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 20, 39 to 41, it says, Also in the fifth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord, Seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And he shall keep in a, it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. So Thanksgiving is the celebration of the Lord's goodness and mercy towards you and I. That's why we give thanks. So in order for you to begin to give thanks to the Lord, you first have to bless the Lord. And after you bless the Lord, then you spend time to worship the Lord. And after you worship the Lord, then you move on to praise the Lord. Because praising the Lord introduces you to his name. To really help you what the, the name of the Lord signifies. And it helps you to embrace his name. And then you go to him to give thanks. Because you don't start your prayers with thanksgiving. We have done it incorrectly. It is wrong to start your prayers with thanksgiving. No, you don't start your prayers with thanksgiving. It's not right. In fact, I want to share with you something that the Lord said in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. Is that when they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. When they knew God. And so the Lord said, we know him. But yet when we wake up in the morning, we do not glorify him as God. Romans chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. And I read to you. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not. As God. What does that mean to glorify? What does it mean? Now, let's ask ourselves. Let's debate on it. What does it mean to glorify God? To glorify God means to adore God. In fact, the word pray is a Latin word. Pray, the word pray means to adore, which means to glorify the Lord. And so, the word glory, fi, has to do with adoring God. And we begin to adore God by blessing the Lord and worshiping the Lord and then praising the Lord before we come to thanksgiving. Before we come to thanksgiving. He said, when they knew the Lord, they did not glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful. And that's what the Bible says. But became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. And the Bible says in verse 22, it said, professing to be wise, they became fools. 
And so when we pray, and we pray in our own way, and choose our own words to present it to God, it's not right. We have to pray scripturally and spiritually. Scriptural means pray Bible prayers. The Lord wants us to take words to address him. So just don't open your mouth and say, Lord, this, I thank you, I honor you. Lord, I don't even know what to say. Who told you you don't know what to say? You should know what to say in your prayers. That is why prayers are taught. Learn. If you are thanking the Lord, you should be able to know the words you use to express in your prayers. A lot of people don't know how to pray in their mother tongue. And so when you are, you, they ask to pray, they just start praying in tongues. You tell them to pray for Ghana, they pray in tongues. You tell them to pray for their father, they are praying in tongues. We tell them to pray for their mother, they are praying in tongues. You, pray, you tell them to pray for the people in the hospital, they are praying in tongues. They don't know how to address every prayer at every point. They just mix it together. You sh we should be able to know where tongues play its role. And we should also know where our mother tongue, the language you speak, how to express it in your prayers. If you speak English, you learn how to express your prayers in English. That's why Paul said, I will pray with my knowledge and I also pray with the spirit. So we have spiritual prayers and we have knowledgeable prayers. Prayers that you know and you understand what you are saying. If prayers does not mean anything to you, it does not mean anything to the Lord. And that is why I've come and we have come to you to share with you to really learn the proper way to pray to the Lord, to address him scripturally and spiritually. And so I continue. And your question I know you asked me today is that, well, what about Psalm 100? You say Psalm 100 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And it's caused with praise. And I know you asked me that question. Now, let's go to Psalm 100 and read it for ourselves. Now, Psalm 100 and verse 4. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And so what does that mean? Listen to this. He says, enter his gates. Which means, if you are going to somebody's house, and you get his gate, and you say, enter his gates. Which means, thanksgiving is just the entrance of the gate of heaven. Because in heaven, the gate of heaven has no locks. So when you get to the gate, you just thank the Lord, and the gates are open. That is what it means to enter his gates. Then he said, and then come into his praise, his courts with praise. So even when you praise the Lord, you have not even come into his presence. So its gates, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So thanksgiving brings you to the gate. And praises bring you to his court. You have not even met the Lord. Then he said, be thankful. So the moment you finish thanking the Lord, then he said, bless his name. So blessing brings you into his presence. So let me break it into three for you. Gates. Thanksgiving brings you to the gate of the Lord. Praises brings you to the court of the Lord. And then blessing brings you into his very presence. And let me take it again. Thanksgiving brings you to the gate of heaven. But praises brings you to the court. The compound of the house of the Lord. And then blessing brings you to his presence. That is, so if you don't study your Bible well, you, miss, you might misinterpret it, misrepresent it, misunderstand, and, and mis, be, become misinformed. And so we've been misinformed for far too long. It's about time that we get that information. We have to learn, we have to know, we have to understand, and change the way we pray. Change the way you pray. Change the pattern that you used to pray. And then you can be able to apply. So just like the Bible. You just don't read the Bible and say, I've read the Bible, I learned the Bible, so I know the Bible so I can apply. It doesn't happen. What actually happens is that when you learn the Bible, you know the Bible, you must understand the Bible, and it will change you before you can apply. So there are certain times we just open our mouth and start praying, we don't even understand what we are saying. 
And so this is why we are taking this opportunity to come to this media, this taking this medium to minister to you, to address the issue, to help you to be able to package your prayers well. And that's why I'm dealing with this prayer on th of thanksgiving at the, as the fourth segment of prayer. Because we're going to deal with about 16 dimensions of prayers. And now, and so what is the spiritual significance of thanksgiving? In fact, usually people think when you say thanksgiving, it, it means that um, somebody does something for you, so you go to appreciate the person by giving thanks to the person. Or if you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you just because the Lord has given you life to live for the day and the Lord has given you um, water to drink, food to eat, clothes to wear, house to live in, and the car to drive, and the work, the job that you have. So we thank the Lord for it. That's fine. But what is the spiritual significance of thanksgiving? There is a spiritual significance for thanksgiving. Why do we have to thank the Lord? There is a spiritual significance that has to do with thanksgiving. It is not just the appreciation. The appreciation is just the beginning. It's just the, the, the primary definition of thanksgiving. It's just the beginning. But the actual meaning of thanksgiving means that when you thank the Lord, doors will open and good doors will open and evil doors will close. So thanksgiving means that when you shake somebody's hands and you say, I thank you, it means that you are telling the person that may good doors of opportunity open for you and may evil doors of opportunity close. So thanksgiving is an opening and closing. It's a form of opening doors and closing doors, opening good doors and closing evil doors. That is the spiritual significance of thanksgiving. That's why the Bible said, Enter his gates. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. That means you enter the goodness of the Lord. Because when you enter, the gates will open. Good doors will open. And evil doors will close behind you. That's thanksgiving. That's the meaning of thanksgiving. It's doors of opportunity which are open and doors of the enemy are closed in your life. The doors of poverty the doors of uh, sickness, the doors of evil, the doors of death, the doors of lack and insufficiency are closed. But doors of success, the doors of blessing, the doors of breakthroughs are open. So when you say, thanks, thank you, Lord, thanksgiving, open doors, it open doors, good doors are open, but evil doors are closed. And that's why Daniel, the Bible said he prayed thrice a day. And the reason why he prayed all the time with thanksgiving is because whenever he prayed, doors opened. When he prayed, heaven opened. The gates of heaven were open. And evil doors were closed. And doors to the governor were open to him. And at the point when he prayed thrice a day, the Bible said his friends went to persecute him. And David, Daniel was arrested and put in the lion's den. And guess what happened? Because of the prayer of thanksgiving, he prayed. And as he entered the lion's gate and lion's den, the Bible says the Lord shut the mouth of the lions. Because thanksgiving shut evil doors. And thanksgiving opened good doors. So it's an opening and closing doors. That's the meaning of thanksgiving. So we need to get this in our spirit, in our mind, in our soul. Very important. So it comes and it falls into the fourth place of prayer. So prayer of thanksgiving has so much to do for us, but it falls in the fourth place of prayer. So anytime you start giving thanks, uh, you have to understand doors of opportunity are open and doors of disgrace reproaches are closed. Now, I want to take you to the next level to really understand what are the benefits that you get by praying to the Lord. You see, um, when you pray to the Lord, the benefits of praying to the Lord with thanksgiving means that the gates of heaven will open for you. But when you praise the Lord, it brings weapons of warfare to engage in warfare. But when you worship the Lord, it helps you to be possessed with the Lord. 
Do you know why we worship the Lord? We worship the Lord to be possessed. Because anything you bow to possesses you. When you go to an idol worship or fetish priest and bow to the idol worship of the fetish priest, you are possessed with the evil spirit of the, of the, of the fetish priest. But when you come before the presence of the Lord and lift up your hands and worship him, you become possessed with the fullness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I really want you to understand that it's very, very important, very essential that we begin to practice the prayer of thanksgiving. I want to give you some keys that will really help you to really understand what prayer of thanksgiving can do for you. Thanksgiving prayer goes on in heaven. And in Revelation chapter 7, verse 11 and 12, and this is what it says. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Watch this. Amen. Blessing, number one. And glory, number two. And wisdom, number three. And thanksgiving, number four. And then he says, And honor and power and might be unto the Lord our God forever and ever. Amen. So you can imagine, even the prayers that goes on in heaven, prayer of thanksgiving falls in the fourth place, of the prayer dimensions is number four. Blessing begins. Honor, second. Glory, wisdom, third. And then fourth prayer, fourth position of thanksgiving is how people in heaven pray. Prayer falls in the fourth position of thanksgiving. And so we need to arrange our prayers correctly and properly. In fact, scripturally and spiritually. When we do that, then the Lord will appreciate us. That is why we should understand that prayer is taught. And so before I conclude, I want to share with you, if you really want to thank the Lord, don't just say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I don't even know what to say. No, you should be able to know how to thank the Lord in your prayers. And as I conclude... May I suggest to you, this is how you can start. If you want to um, begin to thank the Lord, as you go to bed in the night and you wake up early morning and you have spent time to bless the Lord, worship the Lord, praise the Lord, and you get to the fourth segment of prayer of thanksgiving, this is how you thank the Lord. Begin, this is how you begin, to thank the Lord in your prayer of thanksgiving. Thank God. First, for the daily breath of life. So the breath of life God has given you to be alive today. Thank the Lord for the breath of life. The second prayer you have to do is pray to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your anointed word. Because when you wake up in the morning, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So the Lord's word has brought you into existence. So Bless the Lord and worship the Lord and praise the Lord and thank the Lord for his anointed word. If you are thanking the Lord, the next thing you thank the Lord is for healthy life. Thank the Lord for healthy living. The next thing you can say as you thank the Lord is thank the Lord for grace and glory. The next thing you can say is thank the Lord for wealth and riches. The Lord will give you wealth and he'll give you riches. Then after you've done that, thank the Lord for your, your wife. If you have a wife, thank the Lord for your husband. If you have one, thank the Lord that you are single and the Lord is going to still prepare for you to get a, a, a wife or a husband. Thank the Lord for your children. Thank the Lord for the house you live in. Thank the Lord for your car. Thank the Lord for the church. Thank the Lord for your pastor. Thank the Lord for your friends. Thank the Lord for the, the, the house you live in, the community you live in. Thank the Lord for the city. Thank the Lord for, for the country. Thank the Lord for your presence. Thank the Lord for the king. Thank the Lord for the leaders. Thank the Lord for everyone that you can think of. That is how you arrange your prayers in Thanksgiving. And when you do that, your prayers will be good and acceptable to the Lord. 
And as I close, I want you to know. The Bible says in Psalm 92 verse 1 and 2, he said, It is good to thank the Lord, but you must know where to put it. You must know where to thank the Lord. Don't start your prayers every day with thanksgiving. Because prayer does not start with thanksgiving. Prayer starts with blessing. Prayer starts with worship before the Lord. Prayer starts with praises. Then you come to the fourth segment, thanksgiving. Even heaven, and I give you the scriptures, and go back to the scripture and read Revelation chapter 7, verse 11 and 12. You realize that even when heaven pray and the angels pray to the Lord, they say, that, they say to the Lord, glory, honor, and wisdom, and thanksgiving. If you count the prayers, you realize that thanksgiving falls in the fourth position. And that's why I want us, and you and I, to learn something from this and begin to arrange our prayers properly, correctly, and appropriately. And I believe the Lord will hear us and help us and bless us. And you know, the Bible said, in everything, let us give thanks to the Lord. And when we do that, the Lord will continue to bless us. You see, I know that even as I conclude, there are certain times people will say, those that will listen say, well, it came to a time when Lazarus died and Jesus went to his grave. He said, Lord, I thank you that these people might know that I'm still alive. In John chapter 11, verse 41, Jesus said, I thank you, Lord. When he prayed that word, thank you, it doesn't mean that Jesus started his prayer with thanksgiving. He had already prayed, but the people heard him saying thanksgiving. Why? Because when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he didn't start with thanksgiving. He told them, our Father, which art in heaven, he gave glory and honor to the Lord before thanksgiving. And so we came today to help you to arrange your prayers appropriately, correctly, and appropriately. And I believe your prayers of thanksgiving will open doors for you and close evil doors in your life. Until I come your way same time, stay blessed, stay in touch, and stay connected. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give his peace. Stay blessed. Stay fruitful. Multiply. Replenish, subdue, and take dominion. Take charge, and all things will work for your good. In Jesus' name, amen.